Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrexit, Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. And in Brexit England, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has sacked pinhead zippy Nadim Zahawi for his tax evading, cheating, pinheaded fool. Right, got caught up, you know, with the HMRC. But you know, I think this is what the the second sack in from Rishi Sunak because he, you know, remember he had to get rid of Gavin Williamson too because you know, obviously Gavin Williamson, you know, is is this nasty piece of work. But when you look throughout the whole of the Tory party, just look at the whole of the Tory party, right? You I mean, next next up, you've got um, you've got Dominic Raab, right? Twenty four complaints. Let's count them together: one, two, three, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 22, 24. <laughs> right? Different people have put in complaints about this man. Right? And he's still, I think he's deputy, deputy prime minister or something like that. But you see, we've got to understand about this, you know, someone like Dominic Raab, right, is he would be a bully because he is like, a, a, I think he was a semi-pro boxer, right? And every single boxer that I know, and I know quite a few, every single boxer I've ever met think about knocking people out. They think, I wonder if I can knock that bloke out. How could I knock that bloke? That's what they think about constantly. Right? And that's, and, and, and you know, so if you've got someone like Dominic Raab, right, and he's got that type of attitude, then yeah, you could imagine that he would be a real bully because most of the box, most of the boxers I know, right, because you know, they say, oh, well, you know, it's, it's a, a discipline, it gives you discipline. Yeah, right. Because most of mine know, they're like, most of them are like pit bulls. The ones that I, any boxer I've ever met, right? They just all they were thinking about, right, is knocking people out. That is it. That's all that ever goes through their mind, right? So I could imagine that you know, Dominic Raab, yeah, and that, some someone like Pretty Patel. I mean, now she's a different kind of bully. That's the thing with you know someone like Pretty Patel because you know she she you know you could see that you know because she's only little. You know she's she's quite a heavy lady, but you know in, in, you know in, you know her height. She's only she's only about five four or something like that. Do you know what I mean, I don't know. She might even be shorter than that, right? But you know, so you could you know, and her again. You can understand how someone like her, because you know, because she she she'll literally have small woman syndrome, right? So you can understand why someone like her would be under under this bullying shit. And then you've got like you know more corruption. You, you you've got people like um. Braverman, right, who should have been sacked, right, you know, got sacked by Liz Truss and was taken back six days later by Rishi Sunak. And he said, well, how the hell does that work, right? But he said, no, well, you know, she's um, reflected and she's learned her lesson. What, in six days? Really? <laughs> really? Right, so imagine if, like, you know, the bank manager, right, left with a hundred thousand pounds, and said, and you know, they said, well, yeah, we um, we had to get rid of him, we sacked him, yeah, we brought him back a month later, yeah, because we believe he's learned his lesson. <laughs> Only politicians could get away with that type of shit. Only politicians, but you see, all of the, most of this stems from Boris Johnson. Most of this, right, where you've got, obviously, you know, you've got governments that's run off like these Nolan principles. But you see, when you've got people like Boris Johnson and Donald Trump, right, they don't believe in things like the Nolan principles, right? They just, because the thing with, unfortunately, the thing with those type of, with those type of rules, the same in America, right? The, you, know, the, the, you know, the rules have been made, but they're very loose, right? So, so they're more down to interpretation, right? And you see, with, like, with you know, See, you know, but you know, I was, I would say that, like, I was, you know, but I wouldn't because I was going to say that, you know, that politicians before Boris Johnson was like, you know, even though you don't agree with their politics, at least they was decent people. But we don't really know because, you know, the difference with Boris Johnson and Donald Trump, they just do things in your face. So that's the reason why we know with them type of people. Because when you look at Boris Johnson, I mean, just what well, um, Chris Pincher, Owen Patterson, um, you know, let's let's you know, um, form a, a circle around the Pritster when he got, when, you know, from the ethics, from the ethics, um, from, his, from the guy, from the person who does his ethics for him, right, he sacked that person after that person done a report. No, that person, actually, that person resigned. And then after that, Boris Johnson never filled a post. 
because that person resigned because he gave Boris Johnson the, the report on Prince of Patel and Boris Johnson was like, yeah, yeah, I've seen the report and I'm going to bin it. Right? So a lot of this, all of this, a lot of this has stemmed from Boris Johnson. But the difference is, yeah, Rishi Sunak is a bloody Asian. And with that, <laughs> right, he doesn't realise yet that he can't get away with what Boris Johnson got away with. I mean, it's just ridiculous. He may even trying right this nonsense. He should have got rid of you know Pinhead Zippy, you know from you know. In fact, he should have never hired him because in the first place, right? You know this um this story was out from last year in in July. This story was out, but you know you know but um. Pinhead Zippy decided he said he was going to send out some cease and desist letters. So that's what he done. So he done that. And so so that that pushed it back, you know, up and obviously up until now. But he he's you know he would have been sat there on a hand grenade, knowing that shit is going to go off any. It could go off any minute because he must have known this was coming. I mean, for you not to know this was coming, you would need to be really stupid. And you know, I can't. I, you know, Pinhead Zippy's not stupid, right? You know, he, he's a lot of things, right? But he's certainly not stupid, right? So he would have known this was coming. You know, it's like, you know, if you was a rapist and a murderer back 20, 25 years ago, right? And you notice yourself, well, the police have never had my DNA, but I did leave my DNA at the first, my first thing. So I know they've got my DNA, right? But the police, they've never got my DNA from me, right? And then, right, unfortunately for you, you get arrested for something minor, and you have to go to the police station for something minor and then take your DNA, then you know that any day, because they check that DNA against every database once it goes to the system. So if you so if you done that 25 years ago, you know that they're gonna come, that they'll be coming to you pretty soon. So he was sat on a hand grenade knowing that it's gonna go off. And welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. A special thank you to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can, but I will like all your messages for definite. I'm laughing because you know what? That's taken so long that first and it shouldn't have taken that long because these videos are only supposed to be 10 minutes. Anyway, we have another mass shooting in California. This one is the fourth in a week in California. But this one didn't, wasn't, wasn't like an active shooter situation. I think this was outside a party. I think these people was targeted. But I think three or four people murdered like, in a car. A few more people injured. But, you know, just the, the gun violence what's going on in Los Angeles is just unbelievable. I think this is... I think it's just outside Beverly Hills, this place where this was. So, isn't that, so that's like having a shooting in Chickwell. <sighs> you know, this is the story why I didn't do this, why, why I haven't done a video from since Thursday. Five black officers have beaten a man to death, a black man to death, by five black officers. Now, you think to yourself, well, one, two, yeah, but five, you got five black police officers beating this man to death while he's screaming. Right? You know, we talk about, you know, how we needed diversity within the police service, right? And when they do, we get a story like this. And you, know, you think, well, how is it, right, that five black police officers has beat a black man to death? How, how could that possibly happen? How, how could that possibly happen? It was, his name's like Tyree Nichols. You say, how, how could you possibly? How, how you know something? I mean, words can't really express, you know, the, just the disappointment, right? But you know, the only good thing is, right? It shows the difference between what would happen to you, right, if you're a black police officer and you do this. Or apart from if you're a white police officer and do this. Because these guys have been done, charged already. Right? And they've been charged with kidnapping and, and second degree, I believe, second degree murder. But they're all out on bail because obviously, you know, um, judges and that don't really like to put police officers in prison. Right? Especially like on remand if they don't, you know, if the police officer can come with, with the bail money. They don't really like to put them in because you're not, you, because they know already, right? Your, your life's not really, you know, as a police officer, right? you could have a very, very short life in prison. Especially if you go into general population. So most of them, most of them will probably stay, most of them probably wouldn't go into general population anyway. Right? But, um, 
Yeah, but with these guys, I think that these guys, you know, what, you know, because obviously they've been charged and everything's on camera, their own body cameras. So you think, well, how could you, right, beat someone to death knowing that you're video for, you're videoing it on a video, right, that you, once that goes through, you have no access to it. Right? So unless you, unless you stop it, Right, and obviously they want to know why you stopped it. But if, unless you stop it, right, then you know, they, then you know, they could say all different things about this interaction. If all of them stop their videos, it's just all different things. Like, but so you do that knowing that you've got that video and you're videoing what you're doing, and you're committing a murder, and you haven't got access to that video, and you're black, and you think that. I don't even know what went through these people's mind because these guys was like, they was like a um, a blood getting hold of a crip. You know, you've got like 10 bloods, five bloods, and they get hold of one crip. It was savage. I mean, these guys was like a gang. You know, just, uh, you know, it was just, you know, I just defy anybody to watch that, apart from if you're a hardcore racist, of course, but to watch that and say, you know what? I mean, you know, that, that type of thing could bring someone to tears when you, when you see that. And especially when you know that, you know, that these are black guys doing this to a black man. You say, why? You're supposed to be there, right, to protect and serve. Not to maim and kill. Just... It's one of the saddest stories that have come out of America. And I can't wait to see these guys get sent to prison. And I hope they get a whole life term. But I don't think they'll last long in prison anyway, because, you know, the Aryan brothers, right, are not going to, you know, not going to like them, <laughs> right, you know, for, for the obvious reason, because they're black. And, you know, the, the black, you know, the black clique in there are certainly going to take real offence to what they've done. So, I mean, they, you know, if they can stay in segregation for, you know, the duration of their sentence, and let's hope it's, let's, let's hope it's, you know, around 40 years. Probably won't be, but let's hope it's around 40 years, because it is a kidnapping and a, and a second-degree murder charge. And I'm sure that both of them carry at least a 20-year sentence on each, right? So, let's hope that's what they get, right? But just think, well, why would you do that, right? <laughs> you're not white you could never get away with that shit <laughs> but they do and they think they can the attack video on Nancy Pelosi's husband has been released right and you know something right all of these um, all of the Republicans that were saying stuff about you know, because you know, they're saying some really derogative things about, you know, it was a gay relationship and all these type of things. And then they, you know, they showed the full video. They showed you, they showed the guy hammering the back door to get into the house, right? They showed, right, that when the police got there, the police, like, had the, obviously they've got the body cams on. So, so um, Paul Pelosi and the, and the guy standing there with that, you know, both of them have got grip of the hammer because the guy, you know, Paul Pelosi's talking this guy down, right? Now, obviously he's seen the police. Right, so Paul Pelosi has let go of the hammer. At which stage, if you see how this guy went through with, with this hammer, right, you know, you just have to say, well, that's attempted murder. If that man's not dead, that's attempted murder. Because, you know, you've, you know, it, you know, it was swinging the hammer wildly at his head. You know, and he, I think he got at least two blows in there before, and the police was right, the police was just at the front. No, these guys, these two guys was literally just in front of them. And, you know, just re very, 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 very sad story, do you know what I mean? But, you know, just the, you know, the, um, the attitude of the Republicans over this was just dirty. And they showed what kind of people they really are. Friday was um, Holocaust Memorial Day. So, you know, so that was a, a very important day to, um, to, the, to the Jewish community. In fact, it's a very important day to all of us in the world, do you know what I mean? Because, you know, we all need to remember you know, what um, what Hitler done to, to Jewish people. We all need to really remember that, you know. And um, so, you know, and there's, you know, there's, after, you know, they're getting fewer and fewer of, like, Holocaust survivors. They're getting fewer and fewer. So it's good, it's good that, you know, that we find out the, the extent of the... I mean, I know so much about it, but it's good that we find out the true extent, right, 
of of real evil of what real evil can do. Has Rishi Sunak got shares in Moderna? And you know who's asking that? Carol Vordman. Carol Vordman has been sticking it to the Tories, right? You know, really hardcore over the last... You know, for some reason, Carol Vordman has taken this up. <laughs> you know, I thought the only thing that excited Carol Vordman was calculators. <laughs> <laughs> but she is really going after the Tories proper, going after them. But, you know, I did say there was going to be a lot of unusual stuff, right? Because Rishi Sunak is a bloody Asian. And when I say a bloody Asian, from, from uh, you know, from those guys, I mean, you could just insert the P word, okay? <laughs> right? So that's what you've always got to remember. But Carol Vaudman is really like, you know, she's really asking a lot of questions. And, you know... <laughs> Even with the pinhead zippy situation, right? Rishi Sunak only sacked him, right, after he was asked questions about his own tax affairs. And that's one of the reasons why Rishi Sunak just sacked him on Sunday. He was just like, you know what, You're getting too close, right? My wife's, a, my wife's a tax dodger, right? I don't want to start asking questions about me. This pinhead zippy guy has really pissed off a lot of people because he sent out all these cease and desist letters. So, <laughs> so, right, I'm going to sack his ass. And that's what happened. UK rents are the highest cost ever. And we've got like, across the country, we've got like £1,200. In London, we've got £3,000. I mean, where do you go with that? I mean, if you're, you know, if you are, if, if you are working class or even middle class, where do you go with that? A rent, rental of £3,000. Remember, yeah, you've still got a load of, like, you know, um, council tax to, to fling on that, right? You've got, you know, your gas, you, you, you got your utilities, right? And then, you know, certain, whatever part of London you live, you might, you know, there's a lot of, like, you know, parking issues. But £3,000. Obviously, you know, granted, this is, you know, you're, you're probably talking about, you know, you're probably talking about, like, you know, um, more West London and things like that. But, you know, £3,000. That's just unbelievable. UK has produced the lowest amount of cars for 60 years. So we're going back to what, something like the, I don't know, the Wolsey, I suppose, in cars like that. Do you know what I mean? And like, you probably had like things like Austin's and obviously Mercedes were making cars back then. But they wouldn't have been over here, though. But, um, you know, the British cars, I mean, Triumph? I suppose it would have been times like that, do you know what I mean? But, you know, for 61 years, the lowest amount of cars produced. <laughs> that number ever again. Plans to HS2, to cut the HS2 short, to stop it from coming into London because of the cost of living because all these big projects yeah, they're too much money now there's too much money to, 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 to you know to, to fling up all of these things you know and you know it's, it's it can only get worse I mean you know it doesn't and, you know, nothing nothing seems like it's it's going down anytime soon so things seem like they're only going to get worse we've got a couple of Brexit stories before I go because I'm already eight minutes over right um, MP Karen Wakeley I heard her on the radio this morning right and they said to her um, can you tell me any benefits of Brexit so far after three years, anything. Now, granted, Karen Blakely is, was not a Brexiter. She was a Remainer, but, you know, she sold her soul, you know, so she could get into, be an MP and she could get into, like, into, be a minister or whatever, right? So, she come up with, oh, well, you know, the, the, the vaccine rollout is, I was like, I looked at the radio and I thought, He's going to say to her, well, come on, you know it's not true. And secondly, are you saying to me, the only benefit that we've had, right, is like, because we had a pandemic, right, that's the, that's the only benefit that we've had. Right? And if we didn't have the pandemic, then there's nothing you could point to, basically. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, only three, only three areas in the UK think that Brexit was a good idea, says Yahoo News. So who? Yahoo News, you know them, you know, major news major news company, 
<laughs> anyway, that's what they said. There's only three areas in this country think that Brexit was a good idea. I don't think you know, that. I don't think that. Well, I don't know, but I'm I'm like you know Karen Wakely on this shit. Right? There has been no benefits, right, apart from the vaccine rollout. And at that time, we was actually still in the EU when we was doing the vaccine rollout. <laughs> But these guys are like, yeah, the vaccine. And we were still in the EU when we started. When the when you know when the pandemic started, we were still in the EU. So you know, but these guys are like, oh no, oh no, you know the vaccine rollout. Seriously, man, seriously, you know, there's people in this country, right? The people are really stupid, <laughs> right? And that's. That's just an unfortunate fact. <laughs> anyway, guys, look, I'm going to bow out of here because, you know, I'm, already, I'm like 10 minutes off on this video and I shouldn't have gone that far in. But this, my friends, is by any means necessary. I'm the MC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.